Hello fellow engineers and welcome back to Infraspace. I was just looking on this loading screen on the right we've got like community sort of posts I guess they're like from the Steam forum or something and most of them are like suggestions or questions or stuff and then I got to the bottom one I was like commit tax fraud like there's no currency in the game there's no economy <laughs> is that just <laughs> yeah maybe don't come to this game for life advice but let's get into the game now I did see there was an update for this and it said they've made loading times a lot faster well how are you gonna deal with my city mate 10,000 bits of late in it however many thousand bits of road actually I feel like that is a lot faster. that's way faster those roads are just gone and then we're just in the game <laughs> looking at this mess that I sort of made for a thumbnail last time look at this <laughs> Yeah, so you remember in the actual gameplay last episode, I started putting down some solar panels in between these wind turbines, and the wiring was just crazy. But turns out you can, you can make it crazier, so that's good to know. The, these solar panels, they still work, apparently. Very, very impressive technology to work under all of those wires. <laughs> Oh dear. This video is sponsored by Manscaped.com. Now, I am a dad to this lovable puppy, Paddy. And with Father's Day fast approaching, now is the perfect time to give the gift of grooming with the latest and greatest products from Manscaped. Just like Paddy, you can help your dad take dad bod to the next level with the Lawn Mower 4.0 Waterproof Cordless Body Trimmer by Manscaped. This trimmer features cutting edge technology, such as the super close ceramic blades. There's even an LED spotlight to brighten up the most darkest of places for a smooth shave. But wait, there's more! Within this very fancy packaging are the brand new Manscaped Boxers 2.0. The perfect blend of fashion and function, these are the perfect addition to a much needed upgrade. There's six different colour combinations, and they're designed using premium super soft fabrics that are anti-chafing, cooling and tagless, making them super comfortable. So go to manscaped.com today and get 20% off plus free shipping when you use my promo code RealCivilEngineer at checkout. That's 20% off plus free shipping with my promo code RealCivilEngineer engineer at manscaped.com thanks for sponsoring but let's get back to the game anyway anyway this is my colony if you've not seen this before it's an incredible city builder colony game set on some barren planet and first off we have spaceports here you can see people flying in they're attracted by all the advertising and quotes and as people land they leave their spacecraft via their bright pink g-wagon 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 <laughs> By the way, those of you that follow my Patreon, you know I did the Timberborners Beevils t-shirt. Well, the next Patreon exclusive design is going to be a G-Wagon shirt. Yep, it's actually happening. <laughs> Oh dear. Anyway, they arrive at the city under here. Look at the infrastructure, man. The train lines on the roads. It's beautiful. And they live in these residential areas. Now, these upgrade depending on the resources they're getting. So, if we were to come down here and we just place a very early basic habitat, like, we'll shove that there. That's just a basic habitat. You can see there's no oxygen. People are panicking. No one's moving in. They just need oxygen and survival food. And that holds eight people in there. If we stay watching, you'll see this guy's, he's just delivered some survival food. So, that's gone up. And now, oxygen is arriving in the big old tanker, which they go in, but they never come out again. <laughs> Anyway, now these are satisfied, you can see the habitat is upgrading. And these upgrade to different tiers, and every tier needs different resources. But you always need to keep the early resources coming in. So I think all of our habitats are at least level 5, which needs all of these different resources. And the only thing these are lacking at the moment, as you can see at the bottom, are schools. Yes, school is one of the last things people need. They need home appliances, they need parks and home robots. They need all of those before they get education. But once they do, we get a lot. Luxury residential high rise, the habitat tier six, and they are absolutely insane. And so this is upgraded now. This is now level two. You can see it's got a little two on the top. Yeah, that can hold 10 people. So that tiny building, 10 inhabitants are in there. Guess how many are in this one? Oh yes, it's eight, 18. So from that to that, only eight more people fit in there. <laughs> Oh, game. Anyway, you might be wondering, where do all these resources come from, Matt? Well, everywhere throughout the land are things like this, resources. And we need to mine them using huge mining equipment, massive drills that get us raw resources. And then they're taking on trucks to all sorts of processing and manufacturing before the good stuff is sent on long, long motorways back to our city through an incredible feat of engineering that involves a train line going crazy <laughs> before being delivered to our residence. Of course, as you can imagine, this all takes power, so that's what we've been doing over here. <laughs> but you remember at the end of last episode, 
up here behind our architect suck sign, we've been making a very, very efficient area with our first ever iridium mines. So these mine iridium. We've also got uranium over here ready to be mined as well. Yeah, do you remember last time we built some of these, the hollow display factories? We are now creating hollow displays. And I couldn't work out what they're for. I literally went through every single building and uh, basically the comment section told me <laughs> <laughs> and the dev actually confirmed to me. Uh, they sort of messed up. They're meant to be used for the VR edutainment, as you can imagine. A hollow display will go in your VR headset, but uh, they ballsed up. And they didn't want to ruin everyone's game, so these just don't do anything. I'll probably leave them in, just in case we need them in the future. But uh, for now, we gotta we got to carry on building. Because we want to build one of these, a radiation core factory. And that turns the iridium alloy, which is the iridium, but taken through one of these machines. You can see they look like little rods. Combined with those leaves... They're not actually leaves. That is uranium. And that will give us an explosion, apparently. And we need those to make the red science, which is going to be needed for our research. So in our huge research tree, you'll see... Oh my god, we haven't done fertilizer yet. That's really far back. <laughs> anyway, we're about here. We, we're researching things with blue, green, yellow science. But at some point soon, we're going to need the red science. So that's sort of the super, super late game stuff. Uh, but for now, we're working on the industrial robots because that will cut down the number of workers we need which hopefully means without expanding our population we will make more resources so we should be able to grow without having to worry about expanding all of this although i do think this area of sand here will be nice to put more residential areas in and oh, look we've got a crystal maze already this is a tier four three a tier three and they just need a park now unfortunately for him parks they get delivered but only within a set radius so in the middle of there that is a park and look, he's just outside of it. How unfortunate. Oh, no, there's one there as well. <laughs> oh, imagine that. Like your neighbor, he's just in range. You missed out and you have to forever live in his shadow. Uh, but yeah, I was thinking like my sort of my main plan for today. We've got like a load of big motorways. Look at that mess, man. That is ridiculous. We have a load of big motorways going on. We're going to probably need resources coming from this area. So I was thinking where our motorways sort of merge. I'm going to do like a massive four-way interchange, I think. But yeah, to start with, we will prepare up here. So we're going to need a little bit of a road coming along here. Because on here, we're shoving a few uranium mines. And then north of this junction, although actually we probably want one to go to the other side as well. So let's just quickly do a loop and over road like that. Nice. So north of these, we're going to want some radiation core factories so perhaps we'll just do two on each side for now and then hopefully we'll see yep can you see these trucks they are full of uranium and they should head to each of those and you'll see they're also after the iridium rod things so hopefully if we look down this way yep you'll see they're all coming up now so they're going into those buildings Nice. We are going to be radiating some cores today. All right, so next up, since the number of jobs is equal to the population, I am probably going to upgrade some of these. We want the bigger, we want the tier sixes. So in order to do that, we need to plonk one of these in there, a school. Now, if we look at the school, you can see it's got an area effect and i can't really cover that with just one so we're gonna need two which means crystal maze guy you're actually gonna get or well, hopefully that will count as in range down there i'm not entirely sure but let's delete those two houses so sorry the people that live there but a school has gone in what well, i might do i might hit pause to do all this and then we'll watch them all grow at once because it's gonna be it's gonna be beautiful and next up we can nearly fit one there's like a gap in there if i just delete one of those buildings like that one. We can fit that in that direction. Hopefully we don't need a road to the front. Oh, it does need a road. Why does it need a road to that side? That's really annoying. All right, let's see. If we were to like push this right to the edge, I'm pretty sure we can get a road in there. Oh, wow. The game really didn't like that. The game really didn't like that, but it's in. It is in. Nice. Okay, next up, we got to do over here. I could fit one there, but there's no road and there's no way to get a road to it. And annoyingly, someone built this grid not very <laughs> not very straight so i don't think if i were to move this building oh it does fit ah ignore me it does fit so we'll plonk that there i may as well build some new houses while i'm here as well then but if i shove one there then i can grab this and move it no okay that one doesn't fit at all <laughs> fine game prove me wrong i don't care anyway they're sorted down there let's get back to to the schoolage because for too long these guys have been architects we need to give them education so they turn into engineers right, i think i need to try and fit one like there so what i'm gonna have to do i gotta move this highway aha there we go right now I'll just do a few more schools to cover the 
these red bits. And then we should be ready to press play and watch them all upgrade. I think this will probably be the best angle. Ready? There they go. Oh, there's so many. It's hurting my frame rate. They're upgrading so quick. <laughs> Oh, look, we leveled up. Our city is now level six. Hooray. Oh, that was pretty, that was a pretty cool time lapse. Huh? So yeah, now you can see our housing is four, eight, five, four. Jobs are only four, six. So as long as we're attracting more population, which we should be, because we're now a max level city, we're a planetary capital. It basically means we can build loads of new buildings and stuff without the jobs going mental. But more importantly, it means we are attracting more workers with the G-Wagons, 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 G-Wagons. There's so many. <laughs> but yeah, it is a bit weird that they come out the gooch like that, isn't it? Anyway, right back up here. We're going to need we're going to need a big old motorway. So if we go to the tier 4 three lane super highway, this costs a lot of concrete, a lot of steel. But if you look at the bottom left, we got 44,000 and 18 and a half thousand. So we should be able to build this fairly easily. But essentially, I want to build from like over here somewhere in this direction. However, look, the road is too steep. It even tells us it's too steep. So we're going to need to do a bit of a a bit of a that sort of thing. It's not it's not the uh <laughs> it's not the greatest road you've ever seen. It might need a bit of tweaking. It looks like a four-year-old designed it, if I'm honest. Um, and annoyingly, that was like half of our concrete. We also need to do the road going in the reverse direction as well. And that's even before we actually do the junction-y bit. Anyway, is this my planet? Do I do driving on the left side or driving on the right side? I mean, have I actually done any two-way roads anywhere? I don't think I have. Although these roads, they do actually drive on the right-hand side. Yeah, I better do that then. Otherwise, it will just be carnage. So... We're going to go on this side and we're going to head back in the other direction. Now, this is going to be the test. Is there room to get up this hill next to it? Yes, there is. We're up. Now, the sort of ironic thing is no one's ever going to want to go up there. <laughs> it's literally just a production area, but shut up. That's not the point. Oh, actually, actually, I mean, perhaps I could just like loop this round. We could do like a that sort of thing. That looks safe for like a 70 mile an hour motorway, right? And we got the same at that end. So all these things can connect on just a slip road like that. All right, nice. Then we have like a big old looped motorway. And then we just need to do one going the opposite direction. So is there anything over here we want to take that way? I mean, I feel like we should probably connect this onto like everything. So if we connect that up there, we probably want to come off down there as well. That looks pretty good. Oh, and look, we've just unlocked the industrial robot factory. That means we can supply our factories with industrial robots to cut down the amount of workers. So we'll leave this for a second and we'll just see what these are so industrial robot factories we need electronics motors cubes and snails i think we've got all of that sort of over this way so there's the motors you can see this guy's defending them he looks very stern there's the electronics there's the cubes the neural processors and i think is the blobs just aluminium yeah the snail is just aluminium ore so basically i think we can shove these like probably just along here now i'm not really sure how these work whether once they're built do they just go to whatever factory is downstream i don't i don't really know you can see everything is being delivered we're a bit low on the neural processors only two being delivered there's 30 of everything else but we can click this button here to see where they end up they literally can end up anywhere so all the green basically so i guess if we want to save this road from getting too busy we can do like a little one-way street along here right next to the mines hopefully they're not mining into this but then into that road because then they can get anywhere i do i need to fix whatever's going on with that <laughs> there we go much better all right nice we'll leave that for a little bit and see if it does anything but we don't actually need to worry about that too much because if we look down here you can see our population 4876 our jobs 4600 so we've actually got 200 people that don't have jobs oh, and also something very special is about to happen the amount of steel one two three four what? oh it's gone right, anyway for our motorways what i was thinking of doing is taking some of these roads maybe going left now, i'm a little bit worried we're gonna run out of concrete so what if i do a slow yeah i might do just the highway to start with and then we'll upgrade it if we can but uh, basically same thing we're gonna do like a little roundabouty thing here and this is gonna head along here all right and there we go now we can delete this road in between because basically what we're gonna do we're gonna bypass it so this comes over to that and then over this end we come off here and up onto that so everything in between we can delete i love that all these cars are just driving to their doom <laughs> 
Yeah, and sadly, everyone started using the train again now. So to be honest, I think it's only fair that I do actually put a shortcut in. Because at the moment, they've got to go that way. They've got to go all the way around there. It's too far. So what I want to do, I do actually want to come under here and back up there. So they have a short route now, although they still don't want to use it. Fair enough. Fair enough. I'll tell you what, to make them use it, we might have to upgrade this road. We've got 8,000 concrete. We should be able to afford it. So if we just replace all of the... Oh god, it costs a lot of concrete. But this will mean this route is hopefully as quick as it was previously, before I messed about, up to that point. Yes, and that's all it took. Now they're using this route again. Nice. Okay. Perfect. So next up, I'm going to spend a few minutes just connecting like every road to these two motorways, basically. I do want people to use these because they're like, oh, they're my super highways. Right. So anyway, we've got these roads. We've got some traffic on them finally. But what we'd like to do is connect them together. Now, this is where I'm excited because we get to do some 3D highway design. Now, we're going to be trying to build one of my favorite designs, the turbine interchange. So we just need these super highway single road slipways. And First off, we're going to do like the diamond stuff, right? So we got the diamond bits in. Now we get to do the curvy stuff. Though, to be honest, I do want these to be curved anyway. Okay, and what we basically do, we come off in the middle. So we're going to go from there, slip road, and try and keep a very smooth curve over to there. Now, obviously, I couldn't do the vertical at the same time. So we're going to have to just come back and move these nodes. So there's sort of one. Let's try and do the next one. Maybe this one will start on the opposite side. So we're going from there under here. Nice. Okay, that's looking pretty good. Next up, we just got to do the same from the other roads. We want to do a bit of that from this one. We want to go from the middle node again, come under all of these into there. Then we can click on these nodes. We can we can check that and that allows us to sort of straighten these up a bit. So yeah, that's a much smoother curve. There we go. I think we've got a turbine interchange. So if we just upgrade this motorway, we've got the steel and concrete to do that now. Yeah, that's pretty good. That's pretty good in my opinion. And basically it allows everyone to get to wherever they need to. So if you're coming down this motorway and you want to go right, you can literally just turn right and then you're onto that motorway. If you want to go to the left, you just turn off this slip road here. You go around here. Oh God, we got we got a bit of a dip there. I perhaps move this back to fix that. Yeah, that's better. That's a bit smoother. But yeah, that is a turbine interchange and it only costs like a billion concrete. <laughs> <laughs> and there's like no traffic on it. I mean, there's no traffic on it because it's so efficient or something like that. Yeah, I haven't actually connected anything down here to it. So I should probably do that first before I complain that no one's using it. All right, so that's got a little bit of traffic on now. It's all connected up. It was definitely worth doing, right? All right. Anyway, in the meantime, we've just unlocked the recycling center. So if we head into here, they literally cost nothing. Okay, what do they do? They work in an area. Do they need to be connected to a road? Yes, they do. I can see they've got an area and these have red. So if I do that, oh, now they're blue. So, oh, look, upgrades. The the industrial robots, that's what we built earlier. And then industrial waste recycling, which we just built. Some of this building's industrial waste is recycled. Every six rounds, it gets all used resources back. Oh, that's quite good. So I've really got to make sure that these yellow sciences use them then. So they're all covered. That's good. What else can we... Oh, man, literally everything is red. I'll tell you what, neural processors would be a good one. If I downgrade this road, because this road is too fast. You can see how fast people are flying. They're going around a hover truck NATO like anything. You can't even see them. So if I downgrade this road to a slower one like that, then suddenly we can build on it. So I can shove one of those there and another one up that end. And that covers a lot of those. And if it's one in six, we've essentially just made this like 15% more efficient or something. So yeah, we will take that. We will take that indeed. So I think basically I just want to make sure all of these buildings, because these are like the really slow ones. They take a lot of resources. If I make sure they're all covered, then we are efficient. I mean, we could do the same for food as well. So we could do those ones and those. And then our food production cow is, super super efficient now all right nice this is all going rather well i'm as much as i like this i i just feel like it just doesn't look as efficient as my previous designs <laughs> <laughs> like this really was the feat of engineering as was this masterpiece i just feel like trying to copy earth on this planet it's just it's just not the same say what screw this i'm making changes right and there we go not only is the junction done it's very efficient now but look we've unlocked high speed rail so we're going to be doing that next time before we go before we go i want this to be covered in g wagons so we pause the game we delete this road and then back here in this gap we fill it with more residential buildings which means our junction is now covered in g wagons g wagons g wagons <laughs> and on that note 
Peace, love, and G-Wagons, guys. Catch you guys next time. Bye.